Blog Talk Radio. Are you ready to take a bite out of the competition? Are you looking for ideas to make your business better? Welcome to the Core Business Show with Tim GK, sponsored by Apple Capital Group. At the core of every successful business, you'll find people making a difference. And with each episode of the Core Business Show, we talk with those people, examine those ideas, and explore the strategies that make them special. Now, the host of the Core Business Show, Tim Jacquet. Good morning, and welcome to another episode of the Core Business Show. This is Tim Jacquet, your host. Today, I'm going to talk about, real simple, topic is six tips for getting government contracts. Real simple. Six tips for getting government contracts. This is derived from, I'm going to give Inc. credit for this article. Even though I've done a lot of shows on government contracts, but these are just really six tips just to give you additional information. If you look through the other episodes, I'll show you how you start a business, how to approach a contract officer, how to do a lot of stuff with company, government contracts, how to get certified, in detail, how to get a GSA contract, all types of things. So we have early episodes that you can kind of listen to that when I started, that's what I focused on is a lot of government contracts. So here's six tips for getting government contracts or more government contracts. From the article, you can look at our website. I have a partial of this article and some highlights, but you can get it also off of Inc. Magazine. So let's kind of shoot off this real quick. Number one. I'm going to name all six of them, then we'll go in detail. Number one, reality, know your business. Number two, be aware of your advantages before setting up, stepping into competition. Number three, get comfy with all the paperwork. Number four, and we mean all the paperwork. Number five, check the government database. And number six, build lasting human relationships. So I'm going to go in order. Here they said, they have more than 31,000 federal contracting opportunities listed in the government clearinghouse, which I know is federal bids ops, Fed bids ops, F-E-D-B-I-Z-O-P-P-S dot gov. There, it, you should go to the clearinghouse. A large contracts and contracts in general is listed there. Like, for example, today they have 29,000 extra out for bid, and we, this is June. Next two months, they're going to start picking up, and you're going to see a lot towards the end of this particular fiscal year because we know cuts are going to happen again. But sometimes the government wait till the last minute and buy things for the fiscal year because you don't use it, you lose it, the way the system works. So as the uptick in mid-July starts to happen, and there's a frenzy when it comes to August and September. And if you take your time right now and get good with the contract officer trying to learn the ropes, do a few deals with them, they will remember you in that last minute. And that's what you really want, to build a lasting relationship that you can depend on them and they can depend on you. So the worst thing, a lot of people don't get awards because then talk to the contracting officer and find out exactly what they need. If you ask the contracting officer, they're going to kind of tell you within their means what they actually need and what you need to do to get an award. If it's price or it's quality, it's going to be the best price, best quality. Okay? It's not always going to be the lowest. It's going to be best and best. But they can stick their neck out if they feel like you're the best. They can make that distinction versus always going with the low price because the low price doesn't mean always the best quality. I remember I was on a project a couple of years ago when the military put out this bid for church pew furniture. And ironically, I was on the flight back to Houston with a competitor, and I said, I told them what the problem is. What happened, they set this up early part of the year, and they, by the time it came in, it was, uh, I think, July or something like that. Well, they really didn't have time to complain and bid on it. What they had to do is refuse the order. They were kind of upset because now, by the time they go back and do the process all over again, and it's coming from, you know, furniture takes a while to get built, they could not meet the deadline by September 30th. So they were really furious with the manufacturer promised them one stipulation they said, it cannot be, it cannot be made in China. It has to be made domestically. It can't be made in China because they have an embargo with some things by made in China with the federal government. So anyway, one of the options is it has to be made in the U.S., which is not really hard to do for furniture. 
So anyway, it came in. Here is June. Came in. Okay, we only have three months left in the fiscal year. You have June, July, August, and September. September, you can't do a whole lot and rebuild the process. It takes nice 90 to 180 days to put a contract out on Fed Bitsop. So what happened, they were kind of furious because by the time June came and it came, it was en route. This means the pews, when they came there, they couldn't do anything. They had to refuse delivery. They were kind of thin. They were like, they didn't meet specs. And then they had made in China. They were furious because part of, they couldn't accept it because it was made in China. Now, here's the part they were really furious about because now, we in June and only have three months left. Yeah, you have June, but you got to prepare new de- documents, which takes some time, get approvals, put it up, get it bid within a reasonable time, and to get it shipped. Even if you put it up and you set a timeline of 21 days or 30 days, that's mean you're in July. The time you set the bid can take two weeks. You're in the, almost the end of July. Okay. By the time to be able to get the things to you, it can take 90 days or more to get furniture to you because it's heavy, it has to be shipped, and it has to be installed. Everything has to be done by September 30th, and they couldn't get it done. So they have wasted a hundred grand on pews. It wasn't a hundred grand; it's probably like fifty thousand dollars, I think, on pews. And for the chapel, and they're just really furious because there's nothing really they could do. It's one of the nightmares they really hate. Ironically, I was on a flight back in the same month, June. And I told them, reach out to them because they have this predicament. I don't know what happened with that particular contract. I know they refused the other contract. And all they did, the shipping company left it on their front lawn. That's where it remained, in the boxes. And they refused acceptance because it was made in China. So, again, it's one of those particular situations. I'm going to go ahead and move on. So, again... Really know your business and know what the contract says, okay? You can also get training with SBA, the economic zones for the SBA. They can help you with all types of things. Also, SCORE can help you as well. Number two, and those are free services. Use them. Okay, number two, be aware of the advantages you're stepping into competition. Go to Fed Bit Tops. Look at your competition, who they are. Sometimes one person operations, they're just putting their names out there. But take a look at that, okay? Also. Here's your advantage. The government allows kind of make the playing field. 10% of contracts need to go to small and specialized businesses. So disadvantaged businesses mainly. So in government, however, the model can turn turn heads, but they're called set-asides for women-owned businesses, for disabled vets, for disadvantaged groups, for under underprivileged economic areas like hub zones. Okay. They're in the cities. They actually downtown. Oh, they were city in the United States, pretty much as a hub zone, because they really don't have any. The only well, the people who live there are low income. However, really think about it. Fortune 500 companies are in downtown of every major city. However, they don't live there, so there's no economic, you know, type housing there can balance it out. But the government allows them to do that to try to to level the playing field. So anyway, they call Hub Zones. You can look at SBA website, type it in, and they'll give you information on how to get certified in Hub Zone. If you're in that zone, you can get certified. Disadvantaged groups can be across the board, women-owned business, minority business, disabled vets, a certification, and there's a whole page of certification that you want to take a look at. And it's a great program. Try to get it if you can. Okay, that's number two. Number three, just comfortable with the paperwork. Make sure that you register with CCR and the anniversary first and CCR. Make sure you do all your your paperwork, everything is clean in CCR before you bid on the contract because you have to be in a CCR before you bid on anything because that's how they're going to pay you. Okay, number four, and mean all the paperwork. Make sure you read or have someone help you with the paperwork. There is something they, they could put in here regarding paperwork. There's a supplier connection site. Now, you can become a subcontractor. They have supplierconnection.net. There are some things that you can take a look at to try to team with another company, a large company, because they are required to do plans for to help small businesses and to 
to spread the wealth around. So kind of take a look at those. There are deals made with AT&T, Bank of America, Facebook, IBM, John Deere, J.P. Morgan, for example, Kellogg, UPS, you name it. They all have government contracts with the government, and they are required to have subcontracts part of their act, and they have to have proof of that. So kind of team with that, with their small business development end of it for certification. Just look into it, and that's a good fit. Okay, that's number four. Number five, I mentioned earlier, government database, which is federal bid stops. There's also some other sites like Federal Bits Ops. You have to pay, but there are some trial subscriptions you can get. And I think it, one of them is Fine RSP. Let me see. Let me type it in. It's been a while. Give me a moment. It's Fine R, uh, RFP. Okay. There's, you have a free trial. It's called Request for Proposal. Fine RFP. And that's a site you can go to. It gives you a lot of state and government contracts, a free trial. Other than that, for a region, it's like $19 a month, and for national plans, like $30 a month. There's some other sites like them. It's called Federal Fed Vendor. Again, you get a free subscription. And it's plenty of others like that, but let's just name those two so you can have that in your reference. Okay, let's go through the rest of the tips. So check the government database. Now, just try and check and see what's out there. Number five, check and see what's out there on federal biz ops and see what things to bid on. Okay. Lastly, what's really important, you want to build lasting relationships because they're, you know, they're people. And if you build a relationship with a contract officer, now that's throw you business. That give you business, but just build a relationship. Just talk to them, say, hey, I'm new. I have a good business. Here's my capability statement. I have it on the ball. Here's my website. We, you know, we're fast. We're easy. We take credit cards. We're in CCR. Do you have anything that, like, if you're an office supplier company, do you have anything that you need, or do you have this or that? Catch them an email, maybe a few times a month, trying to touch base with them. You know, maybe a month, once a month. Hey, how you doing? Ask them about themselves. So it's really a relationship. Well, and build it with your local agency. So if you're in Texas. No, kind of focus on the Dallas Fort Worth areas and the outlining areas because they like local because they can reach you more and they know you're a little bit more reliable. They don't have to wait for anything because what happens if you are in Dallas and your company is in a different city? Keep in mind they have to wait till it gets to you, and then from you have to ship it to them. If you're here locally, then it's a lot easier because you will get whatever product it is here, or you already have it. And you get to them probably the next day because UPS was shipped anywhere in Texas or Oklahoma pretty much the next day. So anyway, those are my tips real quick. We highlight them again. Six tips for getting government contracts. Number one, really, truly know your business and really know your business. Okay. Be confident in your business. Number two, be aware of the advantages for before stepping into competition. Number three, get confident with the paperwork. Number four, know all your paperwork. Number five. Check the government database and number six, building lasting relationships. So again, this is Tim with the Corporate Insurer. I thank you for listening. I'm gonna break up well, I'm not gonna play anything for my sponsor. What I'm gonna do is go ahead and play the closing. Thank you for listening. Everybody have a great day. Take care. Thank you for listening to the Core Business Show with Tim Jacquet. For more information about equipment financing and asset-based loans, visit our website, applecapitalgroup.com. That's applecapitalgroup.com. Or call us at 866-611-7457. We hope you'll join us for our next episode. And remember, you can always get to the core via iTunes. You'll find all our previous episodes there. And thanks again for listening to The Core Business Show with Tim Jacquet.